Hey, what's up guys? Chad and Artem with SprayGunner.com. And today we are gonna take a little bit of a deep dive into the GSI Creos Mr. Hobby, Mr. Airbrush Custom PS770. So many names, guys. <laughs> Procon boy, don't forget. It's already yeah. started Procon. So well, we, yeah. we just call it the 770. 770, actually an interesting information that's basically discontinued model. We have a few hundreds, uh, few hundreds and stuff, few hundreds coming, so it should be good for a holiday season. And I expect it to be collectible airbrush at some point. Mm -hmm. I'll tell the difference that 771 coming up, nothing changed as far as now except for the finish, and we'll talk about it later. But basically, the Mr. Hobby, as I like to say, don't get it confused with a hobby only product. It's not only for hobby, it's uh, good to go with any solid paint, it's good for uh, custom painting, and we actually got a bunch of parts already using it for. Mm -hmm. uh, Creating some really cool designs, and uh, why don't you start with just a standard like an unboxing video? Unboxing. So, nice looking box on the outside. You're looking at a 0 0.18 millimeter needle nozzle setup, which is pretty fine detail. Right. So, you have your standard box, pretty much like all the other Mr. Hobby stuff. Some instructions. And then you'll open up, you got your foam insert. Nozzle tool, it's not good for much else other than removing the nozzle. And even then I would probably recommend going ahead and pick up the maintenance kit with the upgraded nozzle tool. Little protective cap, also good if you want to do some like blowback cleaning. Just throw that on there, cover the little hole on the end, good to go. Beautiful looking airbrush. Mac valve for adjustment. Um, one of the big things I've noticed is the trigger positioning. The valve is actually vertical to the body, whereas the Platinum series has more of an angle, which causes the trigger to be more forward. So this is kind of nice where it's a little bit more upright, and I think it gives you a little more control overall. Um, also, as always, your little hose is included. It's an M5 threading, so you can use it with the adapter, which actually, I just realized these ones don't come with the can adapter. Hmm. That is the first time I've seen that. Okay, so this one doesn't come with the can adapter, but that's really what this hose is for, is the can adapter. Um, we do sell the adapters for that, so if you want to put it to 1 8 inch and, and use this hose, we have that readily available on our website. Uh, As you can notice, we each got an airbrush. I actually have two, so we don't get into fight here. <laughs> and uh, you have new one, I have two of the used one uh, came from our uh, display uh, spray gunners at uh, the showroom. Another one I just stole from uh, Promare, which is uh, next door from us, the Airbrush Studio. It has the Drew Blair spring in it, and I mean, you can tell the difference. It's much softer, it's much nicer. You don't have to push it, you just put a finger there, and the trigger just basically drops. Very soft spring, so I got a no name $2. Or, uh, we connect here, which works, mm -hmm. and a 30 bucks spring <laughs> yep. doesn't make much sense, but I mean, they both were good, and as Drew said, they're really sensitive to any dirt in it, so keep it clean, but anyways, just keep in mind that you can use a uh, soft spring with this airbrush. But I'm gonna put it aside, and uh, I'll uh, focus on our display unit, so I can take it apart, nobody can yell at me that you yeah, screwed something in there. <laughs> yeah, it could happen. So as I mentioned, this model is, uh, we are getting one of, uh, I think, the last few hundreds of them mm -hmm. in the world, and they're not discontinued because it's a problem. They're not at all. They're beautiful airbrush. They have a bunch of good uh, reviews and people who've been using um, You can tell it's they're very similar to one of the most expensive airbrush you can find in the market. I'm not going to name the... Very respectful. Very respectful, and actually have a lot of confirmation that this airbrush paints on the same level. Uh, one of the guys just left a review this week, 25 years experience with the other brand, picked up one of those. Extremely happy for under 250 bucks. You can be you can beat it. That's just it. And the difference between that one existing in the market right now and the one coming uh, probably in the United States is going to be available. I would say end of the year. Luckily, probably January, maybe not. I'm not sure, but we're going to try to make it here on uh, before the end of the year. But if you're going to get some Christmas presents, try to steal one of these while it's still in stock because. Uh, I don't think you're going to make it on that until Christmas with a newer version. Yeah. But the only difference is going to be finally going to respond to and respond to this question. <laughs> yeah. Started a few times already. Chrome. Okay. 
I've seen some videos actually and the guys were referring to this kind of aluminum color. It's not brushed, it's uh, it's really sprayed on some some kind of uh, spray or whatever, not but sprayed, but like anodized. I'm, I'm not sure how it's made. But they're referring to it as a cheaper version compared to, you know, their competitor brands Chrome. Not at all. So as we know directly from uh, from the G side, it's actually more expensive code and not of not many users understand that was one of the reasons they actually upgraded it to 771. They're just making it Chrome so everybody can be happy. But the one I have now in the market, it's not Chrome, but it's more expensive. It's not like saving money and they're not doing Chrome. They have all the cheaper airbrushes for like starting with 80 bucks, even cheaper. They are Chrome. Yeah. It's not it's not saving same money. It's a different finish, more expensive, and it's going to be Chrome now. Mm -hmm. So, do we different. do we know will that affect the pricing at all? I don't know. I don't expect them to go cheaper because I've heard some rumors they might be map policy coming down the road somewhere. Mm -hmm. And okay. I don't know, as you can tell by other brands, not map policy. I don't know. It means probably it's going to be four hundred bucks. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to speculate on something and uh, don't have all the information yet, but. Anyways, it's an airbrush. I will attach the video in the end from the Chrome Studio. I threw in some, uh, some other artists who, the, who did like a uh, beautiful stuff at the time. But I definitely going to take it all apart for you to show it made of, made of and uh, yeah, as you can see, it used some paint on it. <laughs> I mean, I heavily used this. Ooh, yeah. yeah, yeah, that can use a little cleaning. Well, this is our demo airbrush and we put in a lot of work here uh, going to all the shows and uh, any setup demos. We have uh, actually this $2 nipple from a non name brand. Works pretty good as a ceiling size, so we just put it and use it on these airbrushes. Uh, but this standard's one eighth, so it can go to most of their you know, equipment from all the competitors. Uh, for a field trip, I would start with removing a handle. And actually, speaking of handle, you can see first of all it has the adjustment screw so you can control how far your needle travels and it feels really really good to turn it not as a uh, many airbrush and I have much sure metal feeling in here and uh, all the parts are really precise if you take a uh, similar design Chinese airbrush uh, screwed um, unscrew it like to turn it two and you will see how, how it just feels awkward so it goes all the way in the bubbles there this is really tight. It just showed me how good the technology is to make, you know, and sew the parts really, really tight together. But anyways, I can unscrew that. It has a little dial on it, which is actually adjustable, so you can uh, set up any numbers you want there to turn them for your preset settings. And the handle itself got a cut in it. Not everybody understands why they made making this cut, just because, okay, you can pull the trigger back and needle back by trigger while you need to access this little nut. Well, uh, you can still pull, I mean, if I go trigger all the way back now, I can still pull it further by using this part. And that's important for cleaning because trigger just doesn't allow, you know, some travel of your needle, but you can't really pull it all the way out of the material section. That's why this little uh, cut made here. Real convenient feature. I think it's, uh, it's a good stuff to have. But anyway, so I'll remove it and set right here. Uh, for a needle, loosen this knot and try to pull it back. If you feel any tension, don't pull it just because you can ruin the PTFE seal, which is right there inside the brush body. But this one feels really good. I mean, surprise, it's pretty clean for uh, our demo brush. Not much, much more, uh, much more paint in it. Well, yeah, it's all it's all clean and. Uh, Point into needles, I mean, made in Japan, pretty expensive, cheaper than competition and com competitors, but uh, I mean, still pricey, so be careful with, uh, with the tip, especially. Don't uh, don't stick it into anything. If you get a little uh, hook on the, on the end or like damage that you pull the work, piece of work with it, uh, go ahead and grab one of those uh, sharpener tools. We do have them in stock and they work pretty well, actually, even on those you know, uh, kind of sharp needles. If we do continue, a uh, little uh, chrome type air, air uh, not air cap, I mean, sorry, air cap is next, air cap is actually this small air cap. The part I was talking about is a needle protection, okay, needle protective cap, and uh, yeah, it's chrome type. I would normally remove it just you know, if you want to be safe uh, and uh, don't ruin the needle tip. Keep it on. 
small nozzle of course the japanese are rushed so it means a small nozzle not a big fan of it but that's why i'm using this little tool which comes in a maintenance kit i believe it's a ps991 i might be mistaken but i will uh, i'll attach it uh better okay well it didn't work perfectly now but normally it's much better than uh, the standard wrench which comes with it just because it holds your uh, nozzle in place so I'm gonna lose it and when you put it back real convenient you just uh, start screwing like this way and you can really control the tension when you have this little uh, little wrench which much more wider lever you can just over tighten and then uh, break the nozzle into two parts a real expensive uh, thing to break and uh, we'll put it aside on small nozzles nothing to show much about it just don't lose it uh, so that's uh, pretty much it for everyday use you can remove this uh, little head part which is a really good feature which is uh, that's re removable just because you can clean and access all the parts much easier there's a little rubber o-ring there uh, standard for even the most expensive airbrushes on the, on the market for some reason they're making it from uh, PTFV they are rubber so don't uh, let them touch solvent okay Keep, keep, keep them away from the solvents. They're normally not in the, in the, in the touches because the, the paint goes in the middle of this uh, little metal tube and the O-ring stays around it. It's just for air basically, so it's air, uh, air O-ring. But still uh, there is a chance, especially if you're taking a part, you don't know about it, you just put it in solvent or any solution you use, it can be swallowed and dissolved. Okay, put it aside. For uh, water-based paints, I recommend using the Cratex 4008 Restorer. It's pretty good if you have any dry paint on it or just any kind of dirt. Take it right out. Uh, well, I'm not gonna pull this ring out, but that's something you can do if uh, needed. And uh, the trigger section, of course. So a uh, little nut here, which locks down your uh, needle in place. That's another part why which makes this airbrush more expensive than others, even uh, from the GSI line. That's actually allowing you to adjust the tension for the trigger. So you can replace the spring inside with the Rublev soft spring and it will uh, make the trigger action when you press it much uh, softer. So you just put a trigger, I mean, put a finger basically and that uh, drops right there. With this adjustment, if you can see right now, it's probably in a pretty, pretty good tension. So if you like you to you know, really control the trigger and uh, have it uh, resist so it allows you to understand how, how, how far you pull you can set it to the minimum actually it can go even further so yeah that's pretty tight now you can really put some effort to move the trigger back if you go all the way to the opposite direction you can unscrew it up to actually here well no it's not even holding it's too much but there's a uh, okay so now now it returns it you can barely touch it and it goes back so that's what it made for if you, you know, if you if you don't have if you don't want to have any resistance when you pull the trigger back you can adjust it as well and there it's gonna be really really soft. Anyways, let's unscrew it. You'll see the spring under it, which not going to pop out just because it's already losing tension. Uh, here's a spring, this little uh, screw, and the needle chuck is not gonna go out until you remove this middle section. Normally, when it comes from factory, you might need a uh, wrench for this but i know this is already loosened just because we did it so many times took it apart and uh together back together without any tools besides a couple of nice small tools needle chuck you have uh, this little lever hanging on it which is a good thing uh, to put back together sometimes they're two separate pieces and it's a uh, pain in the airbrush to put, pull it, put them back together but not in this case trigger itself really good design so instead of uh some cheaper airbrushes, even in GSA lines, they'll have uh, the piston attached to it, the one which goes to air valve. That one designed so the piston separate, which makes it kind of harder to put back together, but the feel of the trigger much, much, much nicer. You don't feel any metal kind of uh, metal to metal uh, scratching feeling when you operate the trigger, press it down and pull back, which you will feel sometimes with a different design of trigger. Uh, not going to remove the mag valve, which actually works on this airbrush because sometimes on cheaper versions you have it basically on and off kind of uh, feature, not adjusting anything, 
this one really does adjust if you need to, you know, with, with a little bit pressure adjustment right here on the airbrush without going back to a compressor, works work, uh, works good for it. And the air valve, this last part, comes out as a single piece. There's a few parts we'll take apart later. I'll just show you the little piston I was talking about. Man, come on, what I'm doing. Yes, that's the little part inside the airbrush body. Kind of hard to put back together. I'll show you how it's done. Um, you're going to have some uh, skills and experience for doing it quickly. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it quickly because I'm not uh, taking it apart every day. Uh, last piece in the body, which we are going to remove with this uh, non aim tool, is actually the Words is the packing screw with the seal attached to it. It's a PTFE seal, so it's ready to any kind of solvent, paints, whatever you want through it. And the good thing it comes together with the seal inside, so it's not left inside the body, which are, will be a pretty problem to get it out of there. So it's uh, this little piece. Try not to pull any dry paint from it, I mean through it, and uh, it will stay, it will work for you for a long time. Also, if you have any leakage of the paint and the paint goes back to the trigger section, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad. Sometimes you just need to tighten it a little bit, so get one of these tools and tighten it uh, further, and sometimes it just uh, results in issue for at least for a while. But anyways, that's pretty much it. We still have the air valve and I can take it apart using another tool from the non aim maintenance uh, set. This uh, kind of fork made specifically for a little uh, screw inside uh, the air valve. Here it is, this little screw. And the spring, of course, under it, which can be, as I mentioned already, replaced with a Drew Player soft spring. It's Pretty expensive uh, spring, uh, but it really, really uh, changes you know, the feel of the, of the trigger. And of course, your uh, rod, the air valve rod. Uh, keep an eye on those two seals here. First of all, don't ever put them in this kind of solvent. So, when you're soak airbrush, when you clean airbrush, you gotta be taken apart to you know, everything uh, removed from it. And all the metal parts can be uh, cleaned separately. Of course, the little screw I just took. I just took out where it is. The screw I just took out uh, the packing can go to solvent. There's no problem. So uh, PTFE and metal, uh, but not not those parts. But anyways, that's the whole strip. If you're going to lube it, there's two places I would recommend. Is put a little lube on the uh, PTFE seal there, so then it will go smoother inside and around the trigger air. So little on the air valve itself, so the rod moves uh, nicely and the trigger movement, of course, back and forward. But that's pretty much it. That's all we need to take apart from this airbrush. And then this is the other one. It's kind of got a list of all the parts. Actually, some English on here, and then a little bit of troubleshooting on the back, also in English. Um, if this doesn't do the trick for you, watch our videos, and if, and if our videos don't help, contact us and we'll get everything in working order for you. All our parts, actually, on the website, I have a little diagram of the, you know, the picture. Yeah. The name, so yeah, it's pretty easy to, you know, to find everything and we, we try, I mean, all the parts normally in stock, if we don't have something in stock, we sometimes even just take apart the airbrush so we can supply the customer, right, time mm -hmm. to have to wait. So don't be afraid, like if you buy this airbrush, it's not so popular as other brands and you will be having trouble getting parts. No, 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 we are keeping them all and we have lots of supplies with you know, the parts, we have a lot of them in stock. Oh yeah. Right, anything else? Oh yeah, I think the one final thing is to and there will be a link here or here or probably in the description here or maybe in the description down below. Um, but on Facebook, follow the uh, Mr. Airbrush by GSI Creos, Mr. Hobby, uh, Gunzi Fan Club, I believe Fan is what it was. Yes. Okay. But yeah, the link will be down in the description and come check it out because it'll be, it's not, it's not just the paints and the airbrushes, it's kind of... Uh, I would say everything around the Mr. Hobby for the people who are using it, which is decided, I think it's like the missing uh, missing part on the market right now, and just decided to create a group for all the guys to share their you know, experience with the airbrushes, share questions with other products as well. We have the compressors now in stock, which are I mean, pretty good items, and just yeah. made a video. And we're definitely gonna have some giveaways there, we're playing some really cool contests. 
So join the group, yes, and uh, if you're planning on using or you're already a user, share any questions, share what you have uh, done with the reason and rational to work. I know it's not limited to, you know, hobbies. A lot of people using for scale modeling, but, you know, we've seen the guitars, we've seen motorcycles done with those airbrushes, and they're looking awesome, and all other parts of the markets, you know, where you can't even think of uh, cosmetics, nylons, whatever. Fishing lure, fish, yeah, yeah, fishing them. lures using them. And, uh, so we kind of trying to stay connected to everybody, share all different experience because at some point you might feel like, okay, I'm doing motorcycle, the guys can want it's completely different industry, nothing to do with it. Not exactly. I mean, there's a lot of similarities and sometimes you can even learn you know, between model, the scale model, using pretty much the same techniques after you know, three step yeah. base code and clear code as are bigger guys and you can get some of the experience from them which will be helpful. So stay tuned for you know for this group. Yeah. Well, all right, cool. Thank thanks for watching. watching. Right. Bye. <laughs>
find the skill to put it back in, which I just did. So that's how easy it is with this tool to put a nozzle in. Just really feel it down over time. Feel resistance, that's enough. Um, air cap. Everything is your fingers, no tools needed. Protection. Uh, and the needle can go right in. Again, there's no effort should be to put the needle back. If you feel uh, it's not going through the seal, it means you over tighten it. Needle lock nut. Check the action. So can you see needles pulling and then hand off goes. It's pretty simple, but just in case, I'll show you. All right, so that's it. Lid is on. If you're using the quick coupling, the quick coupling is on. Make sure the O-ring is inside. One of my cows didn't screw the right part, but anyways, there's a O-ring inside there. Little nipple, quick coupling nipple, which might cause the air leak. But that's it. Stay there, rush. All right. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it, guys.